Well, welcome to RDWorks Learning Lab. Today we're going to try and answer a question that several people have posed at me in the past few weeks. How come you've got such a rubbish machine, but you can perform miracles with it? We've got a 60 watt machine, and we can't do half the things that you can do. And that set me thinking. Now, I'd never thought that my machine was anything special. Um, as I said, it's a 50 watt machine that's turned out to be a 40 watt machine. And and of that 40 watts, I get about 30 watts down at the cutting face. So it's a pretty puny machine. You know, I can cut 10 millimeter acrylic with it. I can cut 10 millimeter ply with it. I'm doing things that other people can't get anywhere near. After a, a bit of a straw poll around various people that I've been speaking to, it would appear that most machines are shipped with a two inch lens. Now a two inch lens, which is this middle picture here, is shipped for a fairly logical reason when you think about it. You bought these machines as an engraving machine that can cut, not a cutting machine that can engrave. And for engraving, for example, if you wanted to engrave onto a slightly curved surface or onto a ceramic tile, which may have a slightly pitted or rough surface or wood or something like that, you need a fairly wide range of what they call depth of focus. Now, with this middle picture here, you'll see that there is 1.4 millimeters of what they call usable depth of focus field. Now, you can see the focus point on all of these lenses is not a sharp point. It's a wasting. It goes in and comes out again. So for example, on the 38 mil lens, which is the inch and a half lens, uh, there's a very narrow depth of field. On the standard lens, which is the ones that most of you guys have got, you've got plus or minus 0.7 of a millimeter. If there were machines out there with two and a half inch lenses on them, then they would have 2.3 millimeters of total depth of field adjustment. So as we move from left to right in this picture, everything is growing. The focal length is growing, the ability of the lenses to tolerate variations in surface height increases and also the diameter of the spot that the lens can focus down to increases. Now when you look at those sizes you'll see well they're very small sizes I mean 0 0.075 of a millimeter is about the size of a human hair and then we're going to go up to 0.1 which is parts of a human hair extra and then we're going to go up to 0.125 millimeter diameter which is another mini part of a human hair extra so the difference between the smallest diameter there and the largest diameter is not very much now I'm not going to go into any complicated maths here but what I have done is calculated the areas of these circles Put them down into that bottom chart there as a ratio of areas. In other words, if we regard the 38 millimeter as being an area of one, then the next one along is nearly twice as much area, 1.8. And the third one is three times as much area, 2.8. Now that's a huge difference in area for a very, very small change in dimension. I'll ask you a very simple question. If I've got a pencil in one hand, and a needle in the other hand and I ask you to stick out the palm of your hand and I give you the choice which one would you want me to punch into the middle of your hand I'm fairly sure you'd say the pencil why because it ain't gonna hurt as much that's basically what happens as we go from left to right in this chart with the power density you're gonna get the most hurt from the hundred percent and then you're gonna get less hurt from 56 percent and even less hurt from 36 percent this is the hurt that the material feels from the laser beam. What this really means is that my machine is making maximum use of the power that's coming out of the machine. Now the other factor that could be coming into play here is all to do with the air assist. Many people think that the air assist is to just blow the smoke away from the surface so you can see what's going on. Well first of all you don't need to see what's going on. The machine will work without you looking at it. There must be another purpose 
for this air assist. I personally think the most important thing is to keep a positive pressure in the nozzle so that there's no chance of any debris or smoke going up to contaminate the face of your lens. But there is a secondary function of the air assist and that is to get down into the groove to keep the debris and the smoke or fumes clear of the cut area because the smoke and the fumes will actually absorb the infrared radiation before it even gets to the work surface to try and cut it. The further you move the lens away from the cut area the less efficient the airflow into the cut area is and that's why I think there's another reason which further undermines the cutting efficiency of a two inch lens. There is a counter argument to that which basically says that too much air will actually cool the work area down and you won't get as much penetration. Now I discovered this rather strange phenomenon when I was doing some of my early tests um, trying to establish whether or not a pressure gauge and pressure control on this airflow would be useful. Too much air pressure was actually reducing the depth of the cut. So we'll push on into the workshop and do a little bit of experimentation. I've bought three lenses to perform this test with. I've bought a new 38, a new 2 inch and a new 2.5 inch lens. The 2 inch lens got damaged in transit. But I can still do the test with the 38 and the 64mm lens and we can interpolate what happens in between because I've got the two extremes that I'm looking for. So let's go and have a look at the machine. Well you've seen me doing this many times before. This is actually 8.6 millimeter thick acrylic. So I'm cutting this with probably under 30 watts at the work surface and I'm running at two millimeters per second. Well here's my little test piece that I've made. Basically it's just a, a little fence. Right now I've just fitted a brand new 38mm lens, exactly the same as the one I've taken out. And we'll just set this to its technically correct focus height, which is about there, about six, six and a half millimetres. 25 milliamps. 24.5 3 1 clearly see here when we look at this pattern that one didn't fire which is 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60 and then basically it starts to drop off. This is the 2 inch lens which has arrived with a large chip. Okay well this is the uh, 2.5 inch lens. Now <clears throat> because it's 2.5 inches as opposed to 1.5 inches which is what my original was I've got to raise the nozzle or drop the work by another inch. There's a one inch block plus my six millimeters that I need just here. There we go, just about it. So that is the correct focus for a two and a half inch lens. That's a hell of a distance away from the job. I can just about feel some air on the job there. So let's see how this one performs. This is 25 milliamps. One milliamp. And there's the difference between a two and a half and a one and a half millimetre lens. Look at the penetration about 50% of the penetration. So we can only guess what the 2 inch one would have been 
but I will get a replacement lens and do that test in the future. <clears throat> well, now we're going to go on and we're going to add some extra air locally to the cut area for this two and a half inch lens. And what you have here is a demonstration of British engineering at its absolute finest. I think it really needs to be on the other side to be any real benefit. We'll change it over next time round. I purposely haven't got the extractor on so we can see where the fumes are going. Well, let's see if that works any better. <laughs> well that's an interesting phenomenon isn't it you couldn't design something to do that in a million years so, so that's the sort of thing that absolutely fascinates me <laughs> a little observation like this when can I use it what can I use it for I should have checked this earlier pulse test I think the first thing you can see is, relative to my little teeny weeny micro dots that I'm used to seeing, we've got something like a, a volcano cavity in there which shows us the size of the beam as it's coming out of the nozzle. It's probably best part of two millimetres diameter. But it is clearing the nozzle, it isn't clipping the side of the nozzle, which is what I half thought might be. I love the presentation here, it's almost like a I've got a graph built into my hand and uh, you can see at a glance there the difference between with air which is on this side and without air which is on that side and the puzzling thing is that without air is actually deeper than the with air. Now there is another possible explanation for that and that's the cooling effect that the air has on the depth of cut. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 60 and 65 are about the same and then they start dropping off. So whichever way you look at it this machine shouldn't be running at more than 60 to 65 percent because after that there's just no benefit to be had. All we're doing is decreasing the life of the tube. I will just line up the, uh, the results so that you can get a direct comparison between the two lenses. I would suggest that probably there's about 50% more penetration in the 38mm lens than there is in the 64mm lens. If you're using it for engraving you don't need maximum power but if you were trying to achieve a deep cut then I would suggest you'll have to change to a 38mm lens to get that sort of performance. And if you're engraving with dithered graphics then there's a pretty good chance that this will give slightly better results because it's got a finer dot size. Well, the bad news is that the one thing that I need to measure the width of those grooves with, I'm sitting on. <laughs> well, for the sake of this video, I've had to gulp my coffee down so that I've got a new display stand. The width of the slots for the 38mm or 1.5 inch lens are around about 0.2 millimetres wide. The ones for the two and a half inch lens come out to 0.6 of a millimetre. So we'd have to assume that a two inch lens would be halfway between these two which would make its cut width around about 0.4 millimetres. Well I think to sum up this session um, I'm probably not going to change away from my uh, 38 millimetre lens. I'm very happy with it. So I think we can close this session with a, a rather interesting thought about the length of your focus. Bigger isn't necessarily better and you can do quite a lot with a short one.